Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is joining us exclusively in just a minute. A short time ago, he announced he will recuse himself from any investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. The whole drama began 24 hours ago when the Washington Post reported that Sessions had failed to disclose meetings with the Russian ambassador during his confirmation hearings. Since then, Democrats on the Hill have been going all out with many demanding that he resign immediately. The president, meanwhile, issued a statement tonight describing the attacks on the attorney general as, quote, a witch hunt. Attorney General Sessions joins us now. Mr. Attorney General, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you. So um, here's the timeline as I understand it. On January 10th, you were asked um, in, during your confirmation hearings by Senator Franken if you'd had any contact with the Russians, and you took that to mean in your capacity as a surrogate for the Trump campaign. And then well, a, a little over two weeks later, uh, Mike Flynn was forced to resign because of conversations he had with that very same Russian ambassador. And so my question is, from that point, February 13th until now, why did no one on your staff come to you and say, hey, you, we had conversations with the Russian ambassador. Perhaps we should amend our statement to the Senate in order to avoid the problems that Mike Flynn had. Well, Tucker, the question that came to me was uh, from uh, Senator Franken, and he went into a great length saying that that day some new story had come out and said that various uh, Trump surrogates were meeting continually with Russian uh, officials uh, as part of the campaign. And he raised that question and went straight to that. It's the first time I had heard that. So I focused on uh, that I had not had any such meetings, was not meeting with Russian officials uh, to, on a continuing basis to advance any campaign agenda. Uh, sometime before that, I had met uh, in my office in an official way with the Russian ambassador. Uh, and so I, that was the answer I gave, and I think right. it was an honest answer, Tucker. Uh, I thought I was responding exactly to that question, and uh, it really became a big brouhaha, and I was glad to have the chance to uh, kind of respond today and right. explain it. <clears throat> I, I guess my question, I understand all that, and I, and I take you at your word, that, it, that you meant that you had not contacted or had any contact with the Russian government or its representatives in your capacity as an advisor to the Trump campaign. My point, though, again, is that a little over two weeks later, the national security advisor has to resign because of conversations that he had, also in his capacity as a non-surrogate for the campaign, with the very same ambassador. So did anyone on your staff say to you, holy smokes, perhaps we should clarify this because you could see how it could be a problem? No, I, I never gave that a thought, never I considered it. I don't believe anyone ever mentioned that to me uh, in quite, you know, quite different circumstances to me, Tucker, unrelated. Okay. What, what, uh, what so was we the, just had, go ahead. What, so what I had was a the meeting in my of, office with two senior staffers, right. both retired military people, non-political, uh, and we had a meeting with some 25 ambassadors uh, in recent months uh, while I was senator, and the Russian ambassador was just one of them. Right, but, but he was also at the very center of countless news stories and of accusations by Democrats that the campaign was influenced, <clears throat> pardon me, by the Russian government. So it just seems like a red flag might have arisen. What was the nature of your conversations? You had said, I think, earlier that they did not pertain to the campaign. And no. yet there was an indication today from an administration official that there was conversation about the campaign, if you could clarify. I don't know what that would be referring to, but I would just say that we had a conversation uh, that he came in and we talked about a number of issues. One of them was the Ukraine, and we had a disagreement over that. Uh, the Ukrainian ambassador had been into my office for a meeting the day before, uh, and so we had a little disagreement over the Ukrainian issue. Uh, and uh, so we had a number of discussions like that, Tucker, but uh, I don't recall any discussion of the campaign in any significant way. It was no, in no way some sort of coordinating of an effort or doing anything improper, and I don't believe anybody that was in that meeting would have seen or believed I said one thing that was improper or right. in, unwise. And I, it was a really a, a sad thing to be attacked like that, but I, had, I, I think we've explained it and we intend to move forward. Um, according to news reports, you met twice with the Russian ambassador in person, Ambassador Kesliak, and, and had one phone conversation with him. Is that the extent of your contact with him, those three 
events? I don't remember whether I had a phone call conversation with him or not. I spoke at the Republican convention at a uh, conference with some 50 ambassadors. Uh, after I spoke, I walked down from the podium and uh, mingled with a number of people, and we met at that occasion and had a chat. Uh, otherwise, uh, and I left uh, shortly thereafter. So uh, that's the only two times that I recall having met him. Perhaps I have. I'm on the Armed Services Committee, and, and sometimes you meet people like that. But I don't recall having met anyone, uh, met him any other time. What, why uh, did you recuse me, yourself is, from okay. this? I mean, I, I understand your position is none of these conversations had anything to do with the campaign or your capacity as an advisor to the campaign, but you've recused yourself. Why? Uh, Tucker, we had started when I got uh, uh, confirmed. I told uh, the uh, Senate during that process that I would review issues before me to determine whether or not I should recuse myself. Recusal is not an admission of any wrongdoing. It's simply that uh, whether or not you can be perceived as fairly deciding a case or evaluating a case. And so I committed to do that. After I became Attorney General, and I've only been there three weeks, uh, we met with professional staff, ethics uh, people, to discuss this issue. And uh, we had a full meeting um, some a week or so ago and planned to have a meeting today. It was on our schedule to make a final decision about whether or not uh, I should recuse myself. And the reason I believed I should recuse myself is because I was involved in the campaign. To a degree, I think it would have been perceived is that I wouldn't be objective in participating in an investigation right. that might involve the campaign. I do not confirm or deny any investigation. I just felt like I should clear the air, and, and uh, we we're moving toward that end even before this latest uh, flap. So d does your recusal extend to, say, an investigation into the leaks that led to the departure of General Flynn? Uh, these things have to be decided on a case-by-case -case basis. Anytime anything comes up connected to the campaign, uh, I would be recused because I've made that clear. If something else comes up that's not related to the campaign, we would go through the same process as I committed to the Senate, and that I have done, and that is to see if uh, there's a reason I should not uh, be involved in the case. Right. So I think I've performed ex uh, exactly correctly for an Attorney General of the United States. Now, you're a foreign policy advisor. In fact, you're the chairman, I think, of the, the foreign policy advisors uh, to now President Trump. In that capacity, do you remember conversations that you had as a campaign about Russia? And was there any, did you have any belief that they were putting their thumb on the scale, rooting for President Trump over Hillary Clinton. What were your conversations about Russia? I never had any conversations about, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the Russians about this campaign and putting uh, them assisting in the campaign or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I went out and spoke and I right. uh, campaigned for Trump, but I was not um, involved in anything like that, you can be sure. But, but did the campaign, I guess my question is, did the campaign believe that the Russian government, the Putin government, favored Trump over Clinton in this I race? have never been told that. that I, um, I've never been told that. Do you think they did? I don't have any idea, Tucker. You'd have to ask them. Right. Do you think, I mean, the, the core allegation here from Democrats and some Republicans on the Hill have suggested that they don't think it's a crazy idea that the Russian government influenced the outcome of this election. Do you think that that's true? Uh, I think the evidence is, um, you know, people are bringing forth evidence and uh, there are congressional committees that are investigating that. And I believe the truth will come out. It usually does. Huh. Um, do you think there has been any evidence uncovered to this point? Well, I'll let, I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not going to make a judgment on that today. But there's an investigation in progress, and so wouldn't that suggest that, I mean, I guess my question to you is you often hear that allegation and the suggestion yeah, that there I, is actual evidence, and there must be some in order to have triggered an investigation, or, or no? Well, the, uh, you know what the, uh, in the newspapers, and you know that the, uh, the Congress is uh, investigating now, and the intelligence committees, and uh, other committees may also investigate. Uh, so you, that will just have to play out, and as right. it always does in, in a democracy. So we just received a call from your office, and I'm hearing from my producer that they are saying that there was not a phone call between you and the Russian ambassador that's been uh, included in press accounts. Was there? I don't recall any such phone call. You don't no. recall any such phone call. Um, do, do you think that if 
this investigation, which I presumably you can't comment on, uh, is going forward. You just said that that suggests that there is evidence. Is there some other point to it? What is the point exactly of this investigation? Uh, I am not going to comment uh, even of the existence of an investigation. That's improper for the uh, uh, Attorney General to do so, and I will not comment on that. That's uh, part of the standards of the Department of Justice. Right. So your position is you're just rec recusing yourself from any investigation into anything relating to the Trump campaign. My, I've made that statement uh, uh, clearly uh, in writing as to what we recuse, uh, what I've recused myself on. Okay. Yes. And will you be amending the congressional record or the, the, the official record um, as to your testimony on January 10th about your meetings with Russia? I'm going to submit, yes, a supplement to the record. Uh, my response went to the question, as I indicated, about the uh, continuing surrogate relationship that I firmly denied and correctly denied. Uh, and I did not mention in that time uh, that I had met with the ambassador. And so I will definitely make that a part of the record uh, as um, I think is appropriate. So my, my final question is, wh why do you think the Russian ambassador wanted to meet with you a couple of times? What, what was their and objective? I didn't do you have think? a meet with him a couple of times, Tucker. I met with him after I spoke and we, we chatted right. on the floor of this meeting and then he called to meet with me. I literally met with 25 ambassadors uh, during this period um, of time and uh, they, uh, many of them were attempting to um, sell their country, uh, assert the um, issues that they thought were important to their public safety and, and, and their issues that they felt were uh, necessary for them. And I just listened, frankly. Um, right. Very little uh, occurred in those meetings, but I kind of enjoyed them. It was a, a good experience. Well, I, I don't think it implicates you to describe what their agenda is, but it is of interest to everybody else. I mean, they clearly went out of their way to talk not just to you, but to other members of the Senate and, and to General Flynn, et cetera. I mean, but they were clearly trying to sell their position on something. And what was your impression about what their objective was? Like, what was the issue that mattered most to them? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, the thing that really uh, caused him to push back was a discussion of the Ukraine, as I recall. And um, as I described it, uh, everything everybody else said about the Ukraine and what Russia did was wrong and everything Russia did was right. Uh, he was sort of the old style uh, ambassador, in my opinion, and that was uh, uh, perhaps the thing that he wanted to share. But I, I'm not sure um, what was primarily on his mind. Huh. Have you asked the people who are in, in the meeting, the, the one sit down meeting with the, the two military aides, their recollections of this? Uh, a little bit, yes. We've discussed it. Huh. And, and their, their memory the is same, the same as yours? They, they, they don't recall exactly, but you, Ukraine was at the center of it. Right. So uh, the question here is, uh, uh, I don't believe there's anything wrong with a, a United States senator meeting with an ambassador from Russia. Right. Uh, you know, I see you ask a lot of questions about it, and that's fine. Uh, but I think it was a perfectly uh, uh, reasonable meeting. Uh, I had professional non-political staffers with me, and uh, we discussed some important international issues. I learned something uh, perhaps in that meeting. I usually did. And so that's the, uh, what happened. People were, uh, uh, ambassadors were coming by to see me um, pretty often. So the president, whom you serve, has, has described these questions as a witch hunt and has said that we need to investigate the leaks that have led to this and to a bunch of these different stories. Do you agree with that? Well, we are having a lot of leaks uh, today in Washington that I do believe are troubling. A lot of it would appear to be in violation of the law. And it's an unhealthy trend, and we've got to do better about it. I do believe uh, uh, every department needs to take a greater interest in maintaining uh, proper security. Do you see this as a witch hunt? Uh, I don't think uh, what was uh, said about that meeting I had with the Russian ambassador uh, um, was um, legitimate. I think it was hyped beyond reason, and I think it was unfair. I was glad to be able to address it today. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, thanks all for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. you. Up next, while everyone else was arguing about how Sweden was affected by mass Muslim immigration, one British journalist decided to go there and find out.